playing today. They're a baseball team around here. The, the biggest sports team around here is the Red Sox. Uh, that is the Green Monster, which is a wall inside Fenway Park. That's where the Red Sox play. It's, the Green Monster is kind of legendary because it's a really tall wall that the, if the players want to hit a home run, they have to hit it over that. And all these people are going to see the Red Sox play. They just got off the train. Everybody is going to Fenway Park, which is right over there. Today's game, folks, $2 here. Come to your free bumper sticker. Ben Attendee loves bumper sticker day, folks. <laughs> This is Lansdowne Street. We're right outside Fenway Park where the Red Sox play. This is outside the park. This is all the, the, the game's gonna start in about, I think a half hour or 45 minutes. So you have all kinds of people out here. They're going into the ballpark and they're uh, you know, buying stuff at these um, carts over here. Fenway Park. I believe this park was built in 1911, and it's the oldest baseball park in America that's still in use. So it's a historical landmark, as well as the, the place that the Red Sox play at. I don't know how well you can see them, but these are all the championships. Like, uh, uh, right there, you see all the banners hanging off the side of the building. You have 1903, 1903, they won a championship. 04, 12, 15. They go all the way down there. They won last year as well. So there's a ton of championships for the Red Sox. Now I'm gonna try to make sure I have all my information right. But this is the U.S. Constitution. You may have heard of the Constitution as the document that the government was, was founded on, but we also had a ship called the Constitution, which was a warship, and it fought in the Revolutionary War along with the War of 1812. And it, it's still designated as an official warship, so it still receives funding, it still receives updates. But this is made out of wood. It's made out of white oak. Yeah, it was built in the late 1700s, so this is like one of my favorite historic landmarks. And we're going to go on the U.S. Constitution. Wow. Oh, it's freaking awesome looking. Those are the cannons that they shot enemy ships with. Cannonballs came out of there. These can't possibly be original to the ship, but this is how they would have looked. The crow's nest where the sailors would stand. This is the main mast. You can see there's stairs on it. So I guess the, the sailors would have to climb out to this point out here to adjust the sails. Some extremely heavy rope. Here we go. Alrighty, folks from the USS Constitution. My name is HT3 Knight. I'm a sailor on board here. You are staying on board the gun deck of the USS Constitution. As you may know, she's the oldest commissioned warship afloat in the world. She was actually built here in Boston in 1797. Uh, took two years to build. She was uh, launched in 1797. She saw the majority of her conflict in the War of 1812, but she also did have skirmishes in the Barbary Wars and the Quasi Wars with the French. Uh, she, her record is 33 and 0. She has no losses, but 33 engagements, uh, battles, skirmishes, and conflicts. Uh, so right now you are staying on the gun deck of the Constitution. As you might imagine, this is where the battles would take place. Uh, right now we're standing from the shock table. This is a nice little overview of the armament they would have at their disposal back in the day. So the guns you see right here, these are our long guns. They shoot a 24-pound shot. Uh, also, we have a 32-pound shot uh, fired by our care nades on the gun deck or the spar deck above us. Now we'll turn to these guns. These are all front-loading guns. Uh, so that means you have to get them inboard into the ship. That way you can access the front to load them. As you may know, our name, our nickname is Old Ironsides. So the majority of our conflict we saw was in the War of 1812. So we'll back up and give a abbreviated story. Uh, in the summer of 1812, we're off the coast of New England. We run to the ship uh, as a British ship, Her Majesty's ship, uh, the HMS Guerriere. Uh, and so we run to him, the her. We'd actually uh, engaged with her about a month prior with four other enemy ships, five total. Uh, end result, it was not a win or a loss, it was kind of a tie. 
So we have a better taste in our mouth. When we run into her about a month later, uh, we start engaging with her. Uh, 800 yards out, 600 yards out, all the way, all the way up until we finally engage her. The whole time, shot we were getting shot at. Uh, the enemy, their shot is either sticking or bouncing off. A sailor hopped up on the sides, looked down, you know, realized the damage was not extensive. That we were not getting penetrated in our hole. A, he proclaimed, "Huzzah! Her sides are made of iron." Uh, and that there is no iron on the sides of the ship, it's just due to the construction of using live oak, which no other country had. Uh, live oak is about one and a half times more dense than white oak, which is what the British and French were utilizing. Uh, and so that is only found in the southern and eastern part of the United States, Georgia, my home state. Uh, so they utilize live oak. And just do a construction of how they sandwiched that between the white oak uh, as well as the density of it, and then no one else had it. That gave us the durability uh, to you know, repel shot, and so we never sustained damage enough to sink her, and she's still around 222 years around this fall. So thank you. Come out, folks. Thank you. Is there anything original to the ship, like anything? Um, there is. So there's about 8 to 12 percent, is what we like to say, uh, is original. But given their her age, that is understandable. Uh, and that's going to be near the keel, which is the backbone of the ship, the bottommost part of the ship. And that is that's a three piece, uh, fifty feet long each, uh, wide oak. Cool. Wow. You remember that block I showed you? This has the same block here. It's, it's like a wedge. Seventeen ninety seven. Nice. So there's one. This must have been where the sailors slept, or maybe the captain slept in here. I think this was the captain's quarters. That's why they have that sign up there saying how many captains there were in the boat. You can see his bed back there. Ah, oh, that's freaking awesome. Wish we can't go back there though, they got roped off. As you can see, people were really small back then because I <laughs> got a duck. I think people were probably about a foot, a foot shorter back in the day. Because I cannot stand up, and I'm only five foot ten. This is the lower deck, or one of the lower decks. Original? This looks pretty old. Uh, unfortunately not. Now it may not be original to 1797, but a lot of things are very, very old. It's like 1800s, maybe. Correct. Yeah. So even if it's not totally original, it's still most stuff is very old. This is how they open the the port. Uh, correct. So this would this uh, we would spend this. Uh, basically releasing that washer, lift up, this would come out, you know, this would yeah. come out, and you'd pull it out. Oh, cool. Cool. Now this here must be a furnace or something, because it looks like there's like a tea kettle right there. So I'm guessing that they must have shoveled wood into this thing so they could cook. It looks kind of like a stove. I'm guessing that this is part of the anchor. I could, I could picture a couple people spinning this thing around to pull the anchor up. That's what I'm thinking this is. So the anchor must be over there. And they probably just had to like have a couple people to s turn this thing here to, to pull the anchor up. Ah, pretty slick. Can't go back there though. Authorized only. Here's the outside of the ship. That must be where the captain slept. As you can probably tell, I'm a bit of a history buff. And in particular, I'm interested in the American Revolutionary War. And I'm extremely fortunate to live in Boston because this is one of the, the most important areas of the country in terms of the Revolutionary War. And I've said it probably 10 times already, this is my favorite site. The last time I was here was when I was a kid. It's been a long, long time since I've been here and I'm, I'm really happy to come here again. But it's pretty awesome and this undefeated warship fought, built in 1797, fought in the War of 1812 against the British. American ingenuity right there. So that guy below talked kind of fast, but what he was saying is, is this boat, it's made out of live oak, which is a really durable species of wood. I don't know if you've ever tried going through white oak before, but if you try to screw something into white oak and you don't drill a hole first, the screw will just break because white oak is so stiff. That guy below said that the type of oak they made this boat out of was even stronger than white oak. So that's why when the enemies would fire cannonballs at us, it, they would just bounce off the side and they wouldn't do any damage. And that's where the ship got its nickname, Old Ironsides, when, when the sailor yelled out, hurrah, that, um, huzzah, her, her sides are made of iron. So from there, th that time forward, the ship became no known as Old Ironsides, and it got that nickname in the War of 1812, is what the guy was saying. Um, he talked kind of fast, so I'll just say it again. 
probably a little bit slower. Oh. And this is still officially designated as an active warship. And the reason for that is because I think maybe in the early 1900s the ship was falling apart and the people of Boston were angry about it. So eventually the government redesignated it as a warship so that way it would still maintain funding. Uh, funding would still be given to it to fix it up when it needed to be fixed. You know, when it needs to be repainted or something needs to be replaced on it. it it'll be fixed up forever because it's still a designated warship. It's, it's an active duty ship. The, um time period appropriate, individually owned I see. or owned by organizations and then um, they were given to us as, okay. as bequeathments. In Hull, you want to see the captain? Hull. One of the captains, so there were four captains wow. from the War of 1812. Oh, this is for the 1812, okay. Yeah, cool. so he was the, the captain at the very beginning of the war I see. and he was relieved then by Captain Bainbridge over there, yeah. he was captain towards the end of 1812. So these two, so these two guys are the captains of the boat during the War of 1812. Yeah, and then yeah. you also have Captain Stewart over there. He was the captain at the end of the war. I see. So. Just so you know, yeah, uh, don't go beyond there because it's emergency exit. Stewart, cool. And now are these all original paintings. So this, this was made in 1815. These are. Uh, let's see. Must be 18. Yeah, this, uh, this is. Uh, so I should say, this is not actually, this is not the captain. That's the sailing master. That's Captain that's Stewart. Captain. And that is an original. This is an this, original painting. Yeah, these are all originals here, wow. which is why we don't have um, uh, allow flash photography because ah. a lot of these that are originals are very flash sensitive. I see. Uh, and even some that are light sensitive in general, we have to cycle them in and out. So the depiction there of the HMS Java versus the Constitution under Captain Maybridge, um, those alternate between the originals and reproductions oh. because the originals are so delicate so that you can't keep them out for more than a couple of months. So, so, do you, so these can't be out for more than a couple of months, these, these things here? These yeah. Uh, let me see. These... So these are the originals. We just brought them back out. So these are the. So when were they made? 1812. Uh, 1814. 1814. Wow. Yeah, and so during the winter time, these were all the way, and we had reproductions out during the winter time. Okay. And that's an original painting. The Captain Brain Bridge. Yeah. Yes, and actually, if you look really closely, you could see sort of a line that's running sort of di uh, diagonal across Bainbridge's chest because the original painting had his flap and his jacket open but Captain Brain Bainbridge, he might have been a Commodore at this point, considered it so undignified that a man of his stature wow. would not be, you know, dressed properly and would look so casual that he actually fired the painter, sorry I'm fixing something yeah. here, he fired the painter and got a new one to then correct it. Oh wow. That's cool. And this is his urn? I'm guessing ashes maybe? So this is a silver sugar bowl, silver slot bowl, and a silver urn. And so, uh, I don't know if these were all he bought or were gifted to him because like Captain Hull got a giant silver urn gifted to him. Okay. And you'll see it upstairs. Uh -huh. uh, and it's arguably one of the best works of silver in the United States ever. Wow. And it's huge. And it's not silver plating. It's Pure silver, pure silver from the citizens of Philadelphia as a thank you for the defeat of the HMS Guerriere. And this is his Bible? I'm yes. Guessing? Wow, this, apparently this is a painting. Uh, this this painting was 1884. This painting right here, I guess the boat was escaping from the British, or the British were escaping from us, I guess. So this this was 1884 is when this was made. That That's the original document declaring war in 1812. That's what this is? Yeah, one of them, yes. Oh, wow. Holy moly, that's amazing. We're declared. Okay, I'm done. I don't want to look at too long. So this apparently is a piece of a femur bone that came from one of the sailors. I guess the surgeon cut his leg off because of an injury, and this is his bone. That's pretty gross. This is apparently a copper spike that was removed from the hull of the boat, and it's an original piece of the boat. This was 
original to the bow. It's a copper spike. 